Jane. Casey, you know, and if it was 1993, yeah. what we're doing, what you would call that is uh, being losers, recording a podcast in your office, just talking to nobody. And yet, there are listeners. I don't know how to feel about this, but I'm Shane, that's Casey, this is 40K Fanatics, and what are we talking about today? Everything 40K and around the hobby, but mainly... We are talking about Warhammer being way too hard. Oh, we're doing that today? Are we not doing stop, that today? Stop the presses, because whatever we were doing today, what were we're we, not doing it. What were we doing? We're doing the balanced data slate and oh. all the rule changes that dropped today as of recording. This is a Thursday sometime in June the 20th, in fact. And uh, I'm going to go through a number of new rule changes, most of which I figure you have not heard of at all. There's changes to your orc boys. No. Oh, yeah. Are they good ones or bad ones? No, they're bad ones. They're bad ones? They're bad ones. No. Yep, yep, yep. They made the invuln less good because... Uh, Are you kidding me? No. No. <sighs> Why couldn't they just nerf the one, f the factions, the detachments on that I'm not playing? I'm just saying. Don't be that guy. You're trying to be that guy now. Look at you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Look, I, I'm, I know I'm, try I'm kind of being that guy right now, but I will admit, as I have often had happen to me, I will choose a path, a direction some would say, of how to do something. Like, I would buy this, or I would get that, and then all of a sudden, nerf. Like Two weeks later, here I am, I just finished one tournament, my first couple games ever with my new Warhammer Detachment 10th Edition Orc Army, new codex, new cards, and then you're coming in, and you're telling me I'm out of luck. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It happens you, every time. You weren't running 120 orc boys well, anyway. Well, that's fair. Yes. It, which you, is why I chose the faction, because I knew that one was going to get nerfed. Right. And so it has been, because it was silly. Now, I want to give a call to action to the people that have got 75 orc boys that are... In various stages of built. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> Those so, poor guys. So if you're one of these jackals that went out and bought 120 orc boys, finish them. Damn it. So I'm on eBay. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You made your bed. Lay in it. Fair. You went chasing. Commit. The, the most obvious cheese. You should learn yourself a lesson. Now see, that's Finish what I'm talking about. your orc boys. Don't put them on eBay. That's what you said. Yeah. Don't do that. That's what well, I get. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't just buy the new hotness. And we've, we've talked about this to death on this podcast. We're going to talk more about it. Yeah, we, we, we definitely are because it keeps happening. Stop following that. Stop cheat. I know it's fun sometimes. Is it? In this case, it was a little bit fun, but other times it's like, you want to be the hot kid on the block, number one Warhammer 40k army in the club, go for it. But don't go out dropping mad bills just so you can win, you know? Have fun. Or spend your money on whatever you want. I just exactly. like the idea that if you came up with this scheme, follow through. Exactly. And maybe next time that a be scheme... A presents itself, you will not be so quick to jump on said scheme. This is why, like you were talking about uh, being hurt in some way by the nerf of the orc, you know, a green tide thing. I don't, I, I don't really believe in that as a concept. Like sometimes my the orcs dude, are too good to be nerfed. Is that what you're saying? No, no. What I'm saying <laughs> is so, some, sometimes my chaos space Marines, the points move up and down and they nerf some stuff and they do some different things. And that doesn't matter to me at all. You still play them. I'm still just going to collect the whole range. Boom. That's what I'm saying. Yes. It, it's okay. If you buy an aircraft and then for a whole edition, aircrafts aren't very good. You got it. It's a cool thing. Yeah. This is why, the other parts of the hobby are very important, but today we're going to be talking about rules, but first we've got to open up the bits box to talk about what we've done in the hobby this week. Shane, what you got for us? I haven't done anything. Your turn. Okay. I have... 
<laughs> I've, been, I've been busy and it's been obnoxious. Let me tell you guys something. I have been trying and have succeeded for the last approximately 20 years to work two days a week for about three hours at a time. And that's it. Golf clap. Yeah. To support my entire lifestyle of... of uh, Debauchery. Yeah. Just general having fun and spending time doing things that I feel like doing. And this week, I've had something every day. I've gotten up to some alarms that have gone off at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 12 o'clock noon, and I am ready to riot. Don't fight it, riot. That's my bits box. <laughs> my bits box. Wow. Uh, well, my bits box, honestly, has been pretty thin. I did not get those whips on the socials for Whip Wednesday soon enough. But I have finished painting three characters for a local commission for Alpha Legion in the Horus Heresy colors. So primarily black with some green. Um... And I've finished up quite a bit of my own Space Marines. Uh, some Reavers that I got as payment for another commission recently. Yeah, the Imperium has come and uh, captured you. Drug you away with your uh, fingernails in the dirt from your Xenos but bedfellows. To be fair, you know I love me an underdog who has no chance of winning. I love being that guy who comes to the club like, why is he even doing that? And I've chosen Raven Guard as my as my Space Marine army. So name the name the last time you met a guy who plays Raven Guard. By the way, I can't. I still, after however long we've done this podcast, cannot keep my various uh, factions straight. Are they the jump back ones? A little bit. Okay. Are they? they the, are they're the, not, Are they the bike ones? The, no, those those are the white scars. Right. Yeah. Uh, sneaky boys. Oh, they're sneaky. Yeah, sneaky in a different way. So these are the good guy Alpha Legion. Oh well, yeah, I I actually heard this on what was it? Uh, Adeptus Ridiculous a while back. And shout this out is, to them. Yeah, shout out to them because man, they are freaking hot. But Raven Guard, they hide, they do their thing, and. They don't want you to know what they did it. Alpha Legion, they hide, they do their thing, and they do want you to know you did it. Night Lords, they do it, they don't care if they get caught, and they definitely want you to know that they did it. <laughs> That's the different types of stealth that they do, and I think it's perfect analogy. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Right? Um, Night Lords got a little nerfed today. Oh, really? So there was a whole thing with a Chaos Space Rings. Oh, Bits Box. Well. We gotta close it. No, it's still part. Oh, okay. It's just a tangent on what you're talking about. Because you're, because you're, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because I'm not going to get into the army specific changes. All right, what you if, got? If you came for army specific changes, that's not what you're getting. We're getting core rules changes. But this one is a little bit of an army specific, specific change because it was one that was getting boozed, which was... If you did the Night Lord's Attachment out of the new Chaos Space Marine book and you had your um, bu 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 warp talons, the warp talons could come down, get in a fight, and then if at the end of a fight phase they weren't in engagement range with something by, yeah. by hook or crook, you, they could uppy-downy. Yeah. And uh, there were a whole handful of ways that that could be used to... Make them nearly untargetable a lot of the time. And so now they have stopped that. They changed the rule and they added what I'm sure was the intent the whole time, which is when they get in a fight with something, they have to kill something. They have to destroy a unit yes. before they can pop back up. I'm seeing that right here. I'm looking at this as you're speaking. Which about makes this. way more sense. Yeah. Because, uh, that's fair. I guess it's, it's not a nerf. It's a good downgrade. It's reasonable. Well, I mean, it, people, it's doable. People were taking them because they were at once a serious fighting force and an action monkey. Fair. So you drop them down, they'd make a charge, they'd eviscerate whatever they ran into, and then the next turn when you drew investigate signal, they'd, go, they'd pop up and sit in the corner for some points. And that doesn't feel very Night Lord Z, does it? It doesn't. All right. 
But uh, yeah, my bits box, I've had no time to do anything. I still haven't finished my Chaos Lord and Terminator armor. I've got to dirty up his cloak with some pigment powders, and then he will be nearly done, and I hope to finish him tonight. I also have got some demonettes to build for how to shout out the homie Valerie and her Slanesh army, which is coming along very slowly, but she has regained her interest in painting miniatures. She picked out a lovely pink and purple uh, out of the army painter air range. And so we think we're going to do like a two tone airbrushed kind of scheme for these next 10 demonettes uh, to give them a little bit of a, you know, running through that, that cursed forest sort of feel that we've already started on. Uh, also, I did a thing. They if you guys good. recall recently, I uh, got married and that came with some gift cards of sorts. Your boy has been buying minis. Well, I bought a mini. So, well, <laughs> tell him what you bought. I got a corn lord of skulls. He got a corn lord of skulls. Boy, fresh in the box. Fresh squeezed. I also saw a really informative video by Ninjon on YouTube where he did uh, a, his take on the quote-unquote grimdark styling paint style okay now a lot of times when people do grim dark all they do is make a dirty looking model that doesn't look like anything yeah so what he did his twist was twofold one it was to go super duper light on the color mm -hmm. so he did a he did an ultramarine okay but he put like baby sky blue as the blue and that looked way 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 too light until he then did step two, which is dirty it up with oil or oil and enamel washes. So not in the recess, it's just the whole thing. Just the whole thing, like multiple steps of just dirtying the thing up, getting all this weathering in that way, getting it grimy. And uh, what you end up with is the, the brightness of the thing does come down, but it comes down to a place that like a clean space marine would be. So you can actually still tell what the heck's going on. Because right, one of right. my pet peeves of people's Didn't paint wipe jobs, it off or anything? Yeah, yeah, plenty of wiping off. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that, that's the whole reason for the enamels and the, uh, and the oils, right? And so my plan with the corn loader skulls, I got a really light red, and I'm going to spray him, uh, you know, black primer, white then purple, zenithal, and then red. And then white. I mean, or then red, but the light red, you know, up around the top. So he'll look, he'll look pink. And then I'm going to dirty him up with uh, enamel washes and get a good patina on him. That's the plan. Uh, I can't I, wait to hear of you assembling this, by the way. It doesn't look hard. Really? No, no. It, it, it's an older kit uh, and it, it doesn't look too tough. <sighs> the thing is, all the pieces are big. And I, good, you know, it's, it's pretty, I find it's kind of easy to put together big stuff. I, I think it's harder to put together very, very tiny stuff because you get where you can't get enough. By the time you get enough plastic glue on a bit to stick it to something, you're in danger of disintegrating the entire thing. And that's a dangerous place to be. But that is yeah. my bits box, somewhat predictive in nature. Well, that sounds pretty dope, man. I got to admit. So, close the bits box. Shut it. Ah. Breaking Psh. news. Breaking news. Breaking news. The balanced data slate has just come out. There was also a, what is it, a Munitorum field manual? Yes. Points changes. Points changes were cool. Uh, the points changes, the points in the back of mine, brand new codex, are out of date. The ones in yours, and as well as the sisters and Gene yeah. Steelers. Because, I mean, a lot of people talk about they shouldn't even put the points in the back of the book, and I disagree with that because there are people that just want to buy the book. Exactly. They want to buy the core rule book, which is also Do has all kinds of stuff, and they want to go play at their house. They don't care about any of this balanced stuff. They don't care if some of the rules are funky. Oof. They'll discover it on their own. Seen a whole lot of red on your field, Menutorum. Yeah, some of my stuff went up, but that's not what we're going to talk about either. I only have... The one thing in here for an army specific change, and that was the green tide just because it applies to you. Um, and I guess we covered that uh, quite warp, a bit. That warp talent thing. 
But what I'm going to talk about, because there were a lot of changes, I want to talk about the core rule changes to the game. Okay? So these are these are big time. Now, a lot of these were done in rules commentary, but now they're actually a part of the core rules. And uh, these are not even all of them, but I'm going to go through the ones that I thought were the most interesting. Mm -hmm. And first of all, movement and pivots. What's up? That we have a new, we have like four pages worth of how you move. Really? So, so movement and pivots. So previously, if you needed, um, usually this would come up with like really big models like Titans and stuff, where if they needed to pivot, then you needed to like put some dice on all four corners of your Evet. big oval and measure each corner. You no longer have to do that. Now, all movement is considered to be done in straight lines and pivots. So, only vehicles and monsters pivot. Or at least charge to pivot, which I'm getting to. Uh, your regular characters can pivot freely. You don't have to worry about that anymore. So, if Abaddon, for instance, if Draconine is hung out and you need to twist him to get through, I've never played with anyone that cared if you turned a model around like that. Like a, regu <laughs> like a regular infantryman. Yeah. Now... As long as they say the same place. It well, matter. the rules as written is that that pivot counts, but oh. absolutely nobody's ever played it that way. Yeah, no one has ever played it that way. No, because it's, it's not very fun. How odd. How odd. Well, because you could have guys getting in places that they could not otherwise get. Fair. If, you know, like, if it does not fit, it does not sit. Anyway, so now with vehicles, what happens is the first time you pivot, and you can turn any amount of degrees around the center of the model, which is its own little can of worms that will need to be opened up in a moment. Uh, it costs you two inches of movement. After that, you can pivot all you want. Okay? So, if my... Like, I got a new Vindicator tank. Yes. If I need it for some reason to pivot to get through a alleyway, then I think it moves nine, so that costs it two. I pivot it. It fits. Run forward seven, and then at the end, if I need, if I want to turn it again, I can turn it again. And um, what are we playing, Horace Heresy here? Well, and I predict that there will be a lot of there will be a lot of rules breaking going on with this. Oh, dude, definitely one hundred percent. Because being that these things are not round, being that they are funky shaped, um, there there's some things like, for instance, my defiler. It's going to yeah. be kind of difficult to establish what actually is the middle of that thing for sake of pivot. Or my Gorkonaut. Or no, my Stompa. There you go. My Stompa, yeah. Stompa, I feel, is a little easier to, to, to determine the center. But things that are like long, yeah. things that are pointy, um, what's the center of a, of a, of a uh, what is it? A basilisk. Is that what it is for the, uh, the you know, the, the big cannon that does the indirect fire for the guard? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's big and long and the cannon's sticking out. Like, what's the center of that thing for pivot's sake? Oh. But what's going to happen is people are going to pay their two inches for pivot on the front end and then they're going to pivot on the back end and that's going to change charge distances. And, as long as it does charges, I'm fine. And you could, you know, you could, you could argue that that is going to, I mean, it's going to be gamed into submission where they end up having to change this, I think, pretty quick. But that's what we oh. got now where we have to worry about pivots. How weird. But at, at the same time, we have to worry about pivots. We've always had to worry about yeah, pivots. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just a, you know, rubber stamped. I need to pivot two inches. Well, I feel like this is going to cause some friction. If I'm going to be honest, uh, being the player who's like who for the last couple of years has had to repeatedly learn things and stuff like that, not mattering when you're sitting down with your buds, you know. Man, it's gonna be weird when you're playing a tournament or something, and some dude's gonna know all these know these rules by heart. And then you're just you're just there to have fun. And you're just like, sure, I guess you know, somebody's going to cause some friction over this, and I can I, I can already feel it. I mean, we had to learn the rules when tenth came out. Like, I mean, yeah, I but do you disagree that people? I do. Are be I kinda, do disagree. You disagree? Yeah, because the rules change. That's well, what keep, that's what keeps the game f fair, fresh, and arguably fun. True. And uh, it's on the players to know the rules. So true. Uh, but we've got a bunch more for you to learn. Oh, yeah. While we're working on moving and pivots, I'm going to skip down. I, these are in no particular order that I put them. Uh, 
Titanic walkers have got new rules. So this is all Do your, tell. This is all your knights and things. They can now. So they've always been able to walk over short stuff. Yes. Well, relatively st- tall stuff. Things up to four inches tall. And uh, now what they can do is they can move through engagement range and oh, and through models. Okay. Hmm. So you can't end in engagement range in the case of a normal move, okay. but you can move through it because what was happening is people were being like, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to do all this complicated measuring, which now only costs you two to yeah. pivot my knight and try to slide him through this alleyway. And then some a-hole would be like, well, I've got, I've got a, a, a Gretchen there and you can't move within one of him because that's engagement range, even though you weren't stopping there. So now they can just do that, which is better. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. They can also walk through walls. Uh, I, wow, you're, you're hitting me with some heavy facts right now. All right. So Titanic units can now walk through terrain. They cannot stop in it or on top of it or anything like that, but they can walk through it. The downside to this is that you roll a D6 and on a one, that night, other Titanic unit is battle shocked. Okay. Okay. I guess the reason this comes up is because what people were doing all the time with their big Titanic nights is, especially the way the terrain layouts, the official ones are. There's a lot of big L's that you would want that you would deploy your knight in. Yeah. So that they'd be behind all the line of sight blocking terrain Mm -hmm. and then you tow them into the ruin because then being Titanic, they could see Uh, out of it. Right. Yes. The problem would be they either physically couldn't get out of those corners because the ruins too tall or it was too far around. It was just impractical for them to do so. Or they would just sit there because it made them harder to shoot and they would never move. So it's kind of like they didn't interact with the game. And it was very difficult for them to because it may take two turns for you to walk around the edge of whatever you were trying mm-hmm. to get, get out of. And so they've gotten rid of that. So now, if you, want, if you decide halfway through the game, man, my knight needs to get in the center of the board. Mm-hmm. He can just walk through that thing that he's been using as cover. Yeah. He can't stop in the middle of it unless he, you know, if, if he fits, he sits. But usually not with the type of ruins and terrain that people are using. Uh, and he's got a relatively minimal risk. And so the idea is that this may uh, incentivize people to bring more big Titanic knights rather than the one knight and a whole bunch of Tiny ar- boys. armagers or yeah, yeah, whatever they call them in the uh, chaos Chicken version. walkers. Yeah, all that. All I that. Like, I got to say I like that because, you know, it's um, there's not a lot of objective shenanigans with that. It's just straightforward, you know? I just like the idea that they can get in the fight. They can't do this to charge. It's a normal advance, I think, fallback. So mm-hmm. they, they can't charge through a ruin. And again, you can't mm. stop in the middle of it. So you've got to have the movement to get there. Uh, your pivot and all that could come up, right? That's true. So, you there know, you go. It, it's like, all right, I'm going to move him through. He could make it this far, except I'm going to have to pivot him so he doesn't stand on the next piece of terrain or, you know, he wouldn't end up in the next wall, that sort of thing. Right. Um, that's that I believe that's all. Yes. That is all of the movement shenanigans that are new, more new stuff. CP cost changes. Do you have anybody in your army, Casey, that, uh, increases or decreases the command point cost of a stratagem? No. Okay. I do. Cypher is the one and Cypher is a little bit of the poster child of this rule change. So used to, you would have things like a Calidus Assassin, and they could sit anywhere on the board and make things cost more. And then they changed it to where they could only make battle tactics to- cost more. And then we all had to stand around and say, which of my stratagems are battle tactics? And we don't have to do that anymore. What we have now is um, using stuff for free now only takes it down one. So used to your chaos Lords or your, uh, I think whatever the good guys captain or whatever the heck they are. We don't care about the Imperium here. <laughs> uh, 
they could use a, they could use a stratagem for free on their attached unit. Now that is just going to be minus one, which may make it free depending on what it is. Also, you can no longer use things twice. You can't double dip. That's a thing they've just eliminated. On the oh. making things more expensive, though, like Cypher does, all the things that made stratagems cost more are now an aura ability. Hmm. They are a 12-inch aura, and any stratagem used on a unit that is within the 12-inch aura will cost you one extra. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, your orcs, my legionary, are fighting mm -hmm. middle of the board. Uh, you go to do a command reroll on a save, Correct. for instance, to try to save your war boss. And Cypher is hanging out just back of my ranks. That's 2 CP, sir. You sure? You sure you're going to reroll? Okay. What if it's a big stratagem that costs two? Now it's three. Pretty neat. But now Cypher, he can't do that from the corner of the battlefield out of line of sight. Okay. He's got to be up close enough for the 12-inch aura to work. So now your Calidus Assassins, your, your Cyphers, your, your various... tricky boys. Yeah, all your tricky boys who, you know, some of them have loan operatives, some of them don't, are going to be up pretty close to the action because that's where In you're going to want... Danger. Exactly. That's really nice. That's pretty I nice. like it. I like it a lot. Um, oh, no, they changed crump in time. I like the double dipping not working. Um, all right, we've got another big change here. This is Mortal Wounds and Devastating Wounds. You remember when 10th edition first came out and uh, Devastating Wounds did Mortal Wounds? Yes. And so Abaddon would walk up and he hit stuff with Drachnine and he would do like 20 damage worth of Mortal Wounds. Yeah, you just it, wreck shop. Yeah, and it would kill your character and everybody else in the unit because Mortal Wounds spill over. So they did away with that and they said, okay, no longer. Now Devastating Wounds are just going to be attacks that you don't get a save for. So you just eat that damage. Sorry about it. Well, they've changed it back. Now they're mortal wounds again. However, these mortal wounds don't carry over. You with me? You're giving me confused looks. What this means. In the case of Abaddon, yeah. he does three damage per attack. Yes. Let's say three of them are going to be devastating. I rolled three critical wound rolls. Yeah. So you've got nine damage coming at you. That's going to be mortals. Yeah. So first you would take the regular damage, which I'll probably do eight or nine to you from that because, or, you know, nine, 12, etc. Multiples of three. You're going to roll saves for those. Okay. You're going to fail them all because they're minus four. Gotcha. So most of your stuff's going to die. But then when we go to the mortals, I'm just going to do three damage to a guy, three damage to a guy, three damage to a guy. Yeah. Not nine damage to however many guys so, that gets to. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying. No splash. Yeah, it's not going to splash anymore because the splash made it where the devastating was the only thing to take because you could just chew through everything hmm. all the time and that didn't feel good. Um, there's another instance where this comes up, where this mortal wounds not carrying over or spilling over and that is on hazardous rolls. So previously, if you rolled a hazardous check on Dragon Ball Z, a character, a vehicle, a monster would take three mortal wounds. A regular old dude would die. Yeah. That was the way it went. No more. Now, it's three mortal wounds for everything. Ooh. So regular old character, or regular old dude, regular yeah. old guy with a plasma, he, he shoots it over overcharge. He fails his hazardous. He takes three mortal wounds. So if you have a feel no pain, you get to roll three feel no pains for that guy. Okay. Yeah. These three mortal wounds do not spill over. Good. So one guy. So five Whoever guys. Whoever shot the shot. Yeah. F well. Well, like case of point, my Ludus. I have two guys who are mechs. They both shoot a hazardous weapon. So if one guy fails his hazard roll. Those, th those three wounds go on him. Yep. They don't go on both mechs. Right. Um, however, I think those are vehicles anyway. So that's the way it's always been. Mechs. Are they not vehicles? In my Ludus. Oh. My shooty shooty boys. Oh, I see what you're saying. There right. you go. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's the example then. 
Um, now, what I'm not sure about, I think you have to take wounds on guys that already have wounds. I guess that makes sense, yeah. I guess that I'll, makes sense, yeah. I'll have to look. There is also a whole big paragraph about this and ha- and who it has to go to. I want to say somebody was with a hazardous weapon, but I, it may not be. Then, yeah, it would have to be because... So here's my question. Think with me. Okay. And we'll look it up. Maybe we'll correct it next week. But there's a lot of little stuff that we are all going to have to look up as we're playing, as it comes up, because a lot of these changes are pretty big and crucial. But let's say I've got a five-man unit of Legionnaires. One guy has got a plasma rifle. Mm -hmm. He fires it, and he fails his hazardous test. Three mortal wounds are coming. However, the guy with the missile launcher is on one wound. Mm Mm-hmm. So do I have to put the wounds on him because he's the model that has wounds and typically anytime wounds are assigned, it's assigned to models right. that are already wounded. But I want to say it may Ooh. say that it's got to be a guy with a hazardous. So you could end up in a situation like, let's yeah. say I feel no pain. Very specific. Under normal circumstances, three three mortal wounds is killing who whatever regular guy. Mm-hmm. So most of the time, this doesn't make a difference. But what if you have a feel no pain? So you could have a dude that got hit with a... <laughs> With a bolt gun shot over here, and you can have a guy that failed a hazardous here, and you can have a character that took some precision shots. We're all going to need to get some of those little dice holders with the arrow to point at who the heck we're looking at. You know, I did just find one thing they did to my boys that is affecting me. My Mega Dobbs during crumpet time no longer have their fort feel no pain. They have a five up. And if you're me... I, it doesn't matter. I'm failing them anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make sense that they don't have an invuln save, is all I'm saying. They are a two-up armor save. They don't have an invuln save. I thought that, that it was now a five-up in, invuln. It goes from a four. And, a, and this is specific. You have to be in the wall, in a fight phase, and you get... A f- it used to be four up feeling no pain. Now it's a five up feeling no pain. But who isn't going after big mechs or big mega knobs with something AP two or more? I'm just saying. So like you 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 use things that use like AP three sometimes, and all I'm using is my armor save. I'm failing, it, dude. That dude's going down. Yeah, but then you're getting the feeling no pains only if I'm in the wall. Oh. So yeah, not really worth it. Well, they they were so good that there was nothing else to take. Well, I bet it was. You know, I bet that there was other stuff within the bully boys, like stratagems and stuff, buffing it. That's probably what it was. I mean, running it with gas or something. You know, I'd have I, to look at I it. I believe they said in the article that they they were strong to the point that they didn't even think it made sense to just points cost them to death. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it, they would still be worth taking, <laughs> was was the inference that I got. Uh, so hazardous changes are new and a little different. Kind of nice. Um, Spicy. Indirect. I hate indirect. <laughs> I, dis- I dislike anything that makes it feel like chunks of the game are not being played. And this is one of them. And they have changed it. Really? Indirect weapons, no matter what, cannot hit any better than 4+. plus. Die rolls of 1, 2, and 3 always miss. So you can't have the... You, you, you can't, like, be guard and give your indirect... Uh, well, whatever it is, shoot better. Whatever that order is, guard people, let me know. And and then have a guy next to him or whatever the heck they do, you know, that changes the ballistic skill and then that makes him plus one to hit. And hit on twos from all the way the opposite corner of the map where you can't even see things. No longer. Four ups. Um, the indirect is now cheaper. They decrease the points, especially in guard. They were the ones that really used a lot of indirect. Yeah. And uh, they, they made all the indirect cheaper finally because what they had been doing, what they had been doing, Whittling you away was just increasing the points every single time a new field manual came out. Yep, for all the indirect, and people were still taking still it, still running them because it was still too good. Because the entire line of sight and cover system, it turns out, is kind of an important part of the game. 
Oh my gosh, they changed Tank Shock? They did tank, change Tank Shock, and I was getting to it. Oh, a little bit no. Of, a little bit of stratagem change action. It's my favorite strat. Well, it may be your even more your favorite strat now. Now Tank Shock works off of your vehicle's toughness. There's no bonus if you're, you know how you got two extra dice, yada, yada. Now, I charge my rhino. I'm going to roll uh, nine dice because rhino's toughness nine. On fives and sixes, it's mortal wounds to a maximum of six. A lot of people are like, oh man, this is really nerfed knights. And I'm thinking, how do you figure? Because a knight toughness knights is will like 16. Be knights. Exa- yeah, knights like, will always like, what be are you knights. talking about? So, I mean, I don't know what you're, what that adjusts the conversion rate to. There, there were some, there were some silly instances where you'd roll 22 dice and you were always going to get your six mortal wounds in. And uh, I think that you're still going to have plenty of opportunities to get your six mortal wounds in. So, ta-da. You think it'll be toughness v. toughness? Yeah, it'll probably be toughness v. toughness, yeah. No, there's no bonus. There's no, there's no like, if anything is higher than anything. It's just roll nine dice, roll ten dice, whatever your toughness is. Yeah. If my forge fiend runs into your guy, I can tank shock. And where it used to, I would have like my... Jaws and claws, mm-hmm. strength six. Yeah, you'd pick the thing with the highest strength. Well, yeah, except Forge Fiend's a shooty thing. And so I'd roll six whole dice and do two mortal wounds and feel bad that I spent the CP. Now he rolls 10 dice. What it does is it makes tanks better at tank shock. Because honestly, it doesn't make a whole ton of sense that all this stuff with big melee weapons yeah. were doing tank shock and the actual tanks on tracks were doing nothing exactly because you know what what's what's then you've got my truck it's got a base strength of eight and then a weapon with a strength of six or a a weapon with a strength of ten yeah what's the toughness on the truck though yeah well i'm sorry uh the toughness is eight okay so you're gonna roll eight dice now. i'm like in the middle now yeah so yeah there you go it'll be good more like what you would expect. Exactly. It makes it. I mean, it's one CP, and it was being abused continually. Like it's a fun but, strat. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there there were whole entire lists that were made off of I'm a tank shock with this stuff with a silly weapon. I'm a tank. So, I'm a tank. I'm a tank. I'm a tank. <laughs> um, more CP changes. This one I think is interesting. Heroic intervention. Have you ever used it? I don't know how, and you've done it to me so many times, and I hate you for it. But ex- go ahead. You you do walk right into some heroic intervention. I mean, it's part it's part of playing a, a bit of a horde army where you're always going to have a lot of dudes next to a lot of dudes. Exactly. Um, yeah, so just so you know, heroic intervention is when something charges something, a character unit that is within six can, like, counter charge. And it used to cost two CP. And that was ridiculous because you don't even get fight first for doing it. You don't get the benefit, the, the charge bonus for doing it. Seems weird. Yeah. So what would happen? What would happen is something would get charged, and then you'd heroically intervene with your character who may or may not be more valuable than the initial thing that was charged, and then the initial charging the attacker would then switch targets and be like, okay, now that it's time to fight, I'm going to fight those guys because why wouldn't I? Which, on paper, seems kind of dumb because your characters be a, would be a more valuable, you know, model. But the way some people use some people, some people use it, really matters. Yeah, I mean, some people. I mean, I like the idea of the heroic intervention because it's like, oh, here come here comes the lion to save these whoever that just got charged you know he's he's nearby and so he's coming except well I, the lion may be a bad example i'm not sure if he still has this fight first or not but he used to have fight first so he would be a bad example because he would actually get to do the heroic intervention and fight first but let's say he didn't uh, you know you you just open the lion up for attacks and then it's like well i guess he gets to thump back but I don't know. It was a funny interaction and nobody used it, but now it only costs one CP and I imagine it will be used quite a bit more. Um, what else is there? I think that is all that I had. Yes. That's it. We're right about at time. You're just, I, I encourage all of you 
if your army got some nerfs, because there were armies that got buffed too. The um, the Admech got a huge swath of improvements. Okay, they're going to be really good. Um, the movement thing is funky. The knights walking through walls is weird. Did they change grenade? They did change grenade. That's right. That's another one. Um, you can now not do grenades if you fell back, advanced, or um, already shot. Because used to, you could do the grenade, like like you could fall back into combat and grenade somebody and just and finish off the unit, which didn't feel great. Really, I thought they took the place of the shooting phase. No, it it said if you're eligible to shoot. Huh. Yeah, what you could do... if you were eligible to shoot, but if you fall back, you can't shoot. Right, but used to, you could... (laughs) There are many things that can fall back and shoot. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, so if it has, like, stuff like that... Okay, now I see what you're saying, okay. Yeah, but uh, the other thing you could do previously was, uh, I'm going to use grenades. And so you do grenade, and then you're like, I'm going to shoot. Because using the grenade did not make you not eligible to shoot. There you go, yeah. yeah. Which was cheesy. It's like, well, if that guy's getting ready to shoot, how's he chucking this grenade? There you go. You know, because theoretically, all the shooting happens simultaneously. Yeah. You know, even though it takes us four hours to play, these battles, if you imagine them, are taking place over, you know, five turns, must be about a minute and a half. It's got, it, it's got some Dungeons and Dragons logic about it. Does, it does. It really does. You know, where every turn is six seconds. So <laughs> a, a, a spell that lasts a minute is, or wait, no. Isn't it every round of combat, the whole round of combat lasts six seconds? Yeah. So 10 things go, and six seconds have elapsed. Yeah. So when you say the spell lasts a minute, that's 10 times around the rotation. Well, you've seen me whiff on grenade and tank shock quite a bit. You can whiff at any time. I can whiff anything, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's because you don't have a dice bag. I have a dice bag. And you've you, seen my and, dice bag. And I've seen you roll on the table. Of course, I rolling roll on, on the table. Rolling on the table. I have is, too many dice to not roll on the table. It's absolutely not true. You come to my house, I got a dice tray big as your head. I am thinking about getting a dice tray, though. You have to have a Anyways. dice tray. Anyways. <laughs> uh, so I just want to like uh, let people know that rule changes are good. Change is scary. We at 40K Fanatics know that change is scary. And we want to remind you that uh, to eat recycled food, it's good for their environment and okay for you. Uh, no, seriously, though. Just because the grim, dark universe can be hard, overbearing, and difficult doesn't mean that you have to be. I want to invoke what I feel is becoming a Kali famous Ma. phrase of mine, which is uh, non-serious places on the internet love to just sit around and talk about how busted their ostensibly favorite game is. All right? Um, Bolt gun. No, I mean, really. There are all manner of 40K communities that just sit around and complain about this is broken, that doesn't make any sense, Games Workshop do better, yada, yada, yada. Okay, well, they've just done that. They've just given you... 40 some odd pages, maybe 50, 60 pages between all the various documents that released today in an effort to make it better, make it fresh, make it more fun. All right. They even released today a competitive uh, PDF for the new Pariah Nexus mission deck, which I believe comes out this weekend. And uh, I am glad that the new version of Deploy Servo Skull, which is now called uh, Unexploded Ordnance or something like that, or Unstable Ordnance, is do- it does feature in the quote-unquote approved um, missions you know, that are allegedly more balanced or whatever. They did make more what I think are obnoxious uh, terrain layouts, and these have got all kinds of measurements on them, which I guess is better if you want to set these up exactly the way they are. I think that it is wholly missing the point of the game to just have so many known variables, but uh, apparently I'm in the minority on that. So, uh, try to stay positive or don't. 
I don't care either way, but get in the comments and be as toxic as you want and tell me why I'm wrong about that and how they've destroyed your favorite game and how you won't play anymore. And, uh, you know, then we'll probably see you this weekend uh, running some new stuff and counting two inch pivots. There you go. Space Marine fun fact. Hit him with the fact. According to some sources, Space Marines can run 21 kilometers an hour and maintain this for roughly 20 hours straight before they get tired uh, or next, start to tire. Next week, I'm going to have a review of the new Bolt Gun DLC, and I can promise you that... Uh, it's going to be great. Malice Kaido, is that his name? Malum Kaido, Malum Stern Kaido. Guard veteran of the Ultramarines. I played the entire thing in one sitting, the new uh, Bulk and DLC, and yeah, great. he does move some 20-something kilometers an hour, which I feel like that's not that fast. 20 kilometers? 20 kilometers. Uh, well, in armor. Doesn't Usain Bolt run like 20 miles an hour? 20 Americans Whoa, an hour? You know, <laughs> how much is uh, kilometers? You tell us in the comments. We'll see you next time. Stay fanatical, folks. <laughs> 